Hey guys, Sean here. Today I'll be profiling my dinosaur deck featuring Crimson Dragon. So dinosaurs were hit a bit on the ban list, but it's all good. Dinosaurs are still very strong. We're incorporating a lot of very unique stuff in this deck. So we have the King Calamity engine, but we also have the new cards from Maze of Millennia. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So this deck is basically building upon my last build. So if you want more details, you can check that out. So we're gonna speed run a bit here. We have the two copies of your UTC. Fantastic boss monster, fantastic main deck boss monster even, flips all your opponent's monsters face down, can attack everything, so I think two copies is very good. We only run one copy of our double evolution pill, so you might not see him as much, but you don't rely on him as much in this version of the deck, so two copies is perfectly fine. Next up, Tree Over Raptor, your basic Stratos of the deck searches you any dinosaur card. Uh, you can pop a card on the field to special summon a dinosaur monster from the grave, so very good for your combos, so three copies is essential. Next up, uh, two copies of your Archosaur. Some people run this at one, but considering that we really need to resolve this effect in order to go for our King Calamity combo, two is vital. When it's summoned, you destroy one dinosaur monster from your field or hand to add an evolution pill spell from your deck to your hand. In this deck, we run one double evolution pill, but also one beta evolution pill, because that's going to be the main way we go into our King Calamity lock. So two copies is very good. Next up, triple baby Ceratosaurus. We all know, you pop the baby, you trigger the baby, especially some of the dinosaur monster from your deck. You always want to see your main combo being your baby Ceratosaurus and your Overraptor, so three copies is essential. A bit less essential is your two copies of your Petit Tyranodon. This special summons you a level four or higher dinosaur. Helps you go into your uh, Xenometeorus, which is vital for your combo here because we're trying to synchro summon a lot. Very good with your ground Xeno because it helps extend your combos. So two copies is very good. Next up, one misc. We would run as many misc as we could in this deck if we could, but unfortunately it's still at one. Maybe one day we'll get it at three. But you discard this card to, to protect all your dinosaur monsters from your opponent's card effect until the end of the main phase. Very important in this deck because you really want to resolve all your cards to go into your King Calamity. Next up, one Kaito Para. So this is important for your combo in this build. I'm sure you can make a build where you don't need this engine, but I think the Kaito Para engine is very good because it not only ends you on a King Calamity, but can also give your opponent a token and a Lost World so that they can't uh, target you on their turn. So what Kaido Para does is he can search you a Poly, and if he's banished, you special summon him, and then you can revive a Poly from your graveyard. So very good is your replacement for Giant Rex. Vital for your combo, so definitely run him at one. Next we have Xenomediorus and a Frostosaurus. These two will be your main way of going into your uh, Crimson Dragon. Xenomediorus will pop a card to special summon Frostosaurus from your deck. And that locks you into dragons, dinosaurs, sea serpents, and worms from your extra deck. And luckily, Crimson Dragon is a dragon, so you're not locked out of it. You can go Xenomediorus and Frostosaurus into your Crimson Dragon, and you can get your King Calamity locked that way. Next up, we have one uh, Dogran Kaiju and one Pank. Great cards for going second. This deck might struggle a bit going second, but we have a lot of going second options in the deck. Dogran is a searchable Kaiju, so we can just search it out an opponent's problematic monster and then go for a combo and Pang is just a great card to special summon going second, destroy our opponent's card and then go off from there. For the hand traps we have a double Nibiru, double Ash and double Droll along with double Impermanence later on. We're running uh, these hand traps at two because we run cross the designator because we really don't want to get interrupted so I think this ratio is pretty good. Next up, triple Fossil Dig, because it just searches any level 6 or lower dinosaur. It can even search your Xenomediorus, which is essential for your combo. However, this is very much a droll bait, so if you get drolled on this, that's one of the main reasons we run a triple Crossic Designator, because we really don't want to get drolled, because if we get drolled, we can't go for a full combo. Next up, three copies of your uh, Ground Xeno. Unfortunately, I don't own this card, and for most dinosaur builds, it's not even essential, but for this build, since we're really relying on Synchroing into our Crimson Dragon to go into our hot red king calamity i think this card is very essential it can search you a tuner dinosaur from your deck which will be your xenomediorus and it destroys a card in your hand which can pop a baby or a petite randon in order for you to start your combo that way it can also act as a fusion spell in the grave which doesn't really come up in this build it can be it's a nice little bonus but doesn't really matter too much but i think for this build you really do want to run three copies of ground xeno if you can the deck can function without it but i'd say at that point you're better off playing a more pure build so yeah three copies Next up for evolution pills, we have beta evolution pill and one double evolution pill. So what beta evolution pill does is that you can tribute uh, two monsters, including a dinosaur, from your field or hand 
to special summon from your deck or extra deck a level 5 or higher dinosaur monster with an attack that is equal to or greater than the monsters you attributed. The monsters you're going to be summoning off this have very high attacks so most of the time you don't have to worry. Most of the time you'll go into your Transcendosaurus Glaciosaurus which is your level 12 synchro which will help you go into your King Calamity using your Crimson Dragon. Searchable off your Archosaur, very good card to have. It does lock you into the same things that your Xenomedeoros locks you into but that's not really a problem. And then double evolution pill for when you want to go into your UTC, you have this as uh, another plan. Next up, three copies of Lost World. Uh, the protection off Lost World is very nice from targeting protection. So if we're going first and we have this in our opening hand, uh, our combo is most likely going to go off pretty well. We can set this up at the end of our combo in Crimson Dragon so that during our opponent's turn, they can't imperm or do anything like that. So three copies is very nice. Next up, triple prosperity because this deck really relies on two card combos, so being able to see more of our deck is very important. One poly, which is essential for our combo with our Kytopera and our Hornsaurus. I'm sure you can cut this in other builds that will get you to a Crimson Dragon, but for this build, I do like to rely on this little package. And finally, called by, and it should be triple uh, cross out. I just don't own three cross out, but that's fine. Triple cross out because we really want to protect our combos as much as we can, so cross out was very good. And then two imperm as the final two hand traps. Again, good cross out targets, but just good hand traps to have in general. Onto the extra deck now, we have one copy of Hornsaurus. You summon this using Kytopera and a dinosaur. When it's summoned, you can uh, place one field spell from your deck directly onto your field. So this is your way to get your uh, Lost World on the field. Also gives you an additional normal summon of a dragon or dinosaur monster, which is very good. And it's level six, which is very important for synchroing into our Crimson Dragon. Next up, Gigantazowler, uh, not as important in this build, but since we won't run Poly, we might as well. Can pop two cards, one from your hand or field and one on your opponent's side of the field. If you have a good enough hand, you can end on this as well as your Crimson Dragon Lock, but most of the time it's not that important, so one copy is just nice to have. Along with a copy of Guardian Chimera, helps breaking boards. We do run Poly, like the actual original Poly, so we get targeting protection on Guardian Chimera, so it's just a nice option to have. For the moment you've all been waiting for, we have one Hot Red Dragon Archfiend King Calamity, uh, one Transcendosaurus, Glaciosaurus, and one Crimson Dragon. So what you're going to do is you're going to use your Beta Evolution pill to hard summon your Transcendosaurus, Glaciosaurus from your extra deck. It is a level 12 dinosaur, Synchro Monster. So you're going to use your Xenomedeoris alongside a level 6 to go into your Crimson Dragon. On your opponent's turn, you're going to activate Crimson Dragon, target your Glaciosaurus, and you're going to tag it out to special summon your Hot Red Dragon King Calamity. So this is your main way of going for your King Calamity lock. It's very fun. Even your Transcendosaurus Glaciosaurus is decent because it does protect your dinosaur monsters that were special summoned from the graveyard. So this is a nice card to have. It's also a big body, so it can help you for OTKs uh, on your following turn. So definitely a nice little engine to have here. Maybe a bit gimmicky, but I think it's very fun, and I think that it's very cool that dinosaurs can do this off of just a two-card combo. As an alternate to your Hot Red Dragon King Calamity, we have Cosmic Blazer Dragon. In case we're going up against matchups like Labyrinth, this is a better card to summon off of your Crimson Dragon. It's basically a Solemn Judgment every turn that banishes itself for cost. So it's a fantastic card to have. It keeps coming back, so you always have uh, a negate on your opponent's turn. So definitely one copy as a backup in case you're going up against certain matchups. And for the final Synchro, we have one Sheng Ying. A generic 10 is very good. We don't have Barone anymore, but I think it's still a nice card to have because it can get pretty big. It can banish stuff from your opponent's field or grave, so I like to have the one copy. For the XZs, we have the one Dolka, one Lagia, and one Lars. Just the generic uh, Evolzar cards are very good. Dolka is a non once per turn monster negate, Lagia is a solemn judgment, and Lars is a quick effect target one card in the field negate it. You can pretty much summon these at any time, you're never really locked out of them. Lars is very good because in case going into a synchro is not ideal, you can just overlay two sixes into him. And you can have two uh, quick effect negates, so definitely a very good package to run. Finally, we have our Typhon. Uh, it's good to go into if we're going second and we get interrupted. We can just overlay a small guy into this, uh, spin a card, prevent our opponent from activating stuff for over 3k attack. It's just a nice backup option to have for going second. Finally, for the links, we have one Pentastag, one Unicorn, and one Relinquish Anima. Anima is very good because it's your new version of Link Rebo. Phoenix just pops a spell trap, which can be important. And Pentastag allows the monsters that it points to to inflict piercing damage, which can be very good on your cards like your UTC, that if they attack into the defense position monsters, they can do a bunch of piercing and win you the game that way. Onto the side deck now, we have uh, a little Bishop package here, one Druid Swarm, one Magnemut, and one Baldrake. Going into the new format, our opponent, if they're playing Snake Eyes, 
won't be able to stop or best duels as easily. It does have a greater impact now, even in matchups like Branded, which is going to become a lot more popular. I think this uh, little package is really good. And even for stuff like Labyrinth, I think it's a nice little package to have. So, little bestial package, it's pretty good. They're also level 6s, which is funny because they can help you go into stuff like, like your lores or even uh, as synchro material for your level 12s. Next up for back row removal, Harpy's Feather Duster and Lightning Storms. This deck struggles against back row, so I think this little package is good to have. For board breakers, we have double Dark Hole, which is funny because we can normal summon a baby, activate Dark Hole, destroy the baby, and then activate its effect to special summon something from the deck. Can be a niche combo starter as well as getting rid of stuff from your opponent's field. With the new bands to generic Omni Negates, this might have a lot more applications now, so Double Dark Hole is pretty cool. Alongside a good board breaker in Evenly Matched, because why not? We can give our opponent a token with Lost World. If they get rid of the Lost World but still have the token, we can Evenly Match them, make them banish all their cards besides the token, and just win the game from there. Next up we have Necro Valley, because it's good against certain matchups. We can place it directly from our deck to the field using our Hornsaurus. With Tear maybe coming back with the new Lightsworn support, this might be a good option to have in the future. And finally, Triple Effect Veiler. Mainly it's crosshair targets, but it's just nice to have if you're going second, to have more targeted disruption to stop your opponent's plays. Alright, so now I'll quickly show off the two card uh, King Calamity combo with Overraptor and Babysaurosaurus. So we will normal summon our Overraptor, we're going to search a copy of our Misk, we're going to activate Misk, discard him so now our dinosaur monsters are protected for the turn. We're going to activate Mist, we're going to banish it to special summon our Archosaur. Archosaur effect, we're going to pop the baby in our hand to add a beta evolution pill from our deck to our hand. The baby Ceresaurus is going to trigger, we're going to special summon a Petit Pteranodon. We're going to activate our Overraptor, we're going to pop the Petit Pteranodon, special summon the baby, trigger the Petit Pteranodon in the graveyard, we're going to special summon our Xenomediorus. We're going to activate Xenomediorus, we're going to pop the baby to special summon Frostosaurus from our deck. We're going to trigger Baby, special summon our Kaito Terra. Activate the effect, we're going to add a Poly from our deck to our hands. Activate Poly, we're going to fuse the Frostosaurus and the Kaito Para to go into our Hornsaurus. Activate the effect, we're going to activate Lost World directly from the deck. Next up, we'll activate Beta Evolution Pill. We're going to tribute our Archosaur and our Overraptor. To special summon a Glaciosaurus, now we can synchro with these two into our Crimson Dragon. Also, when we summon our Transcendosaurus, Lost World will trigger, giving our opponent a token. We're going to end our turn, activate Crimson Dragon, target our Transcendosaurus, return to the extra deck to go into our King Calamity, activate the effect, our opponent can activate cards or effects for the rest of the turn. So that's it for my Dinosaur deck profile. So let me know what you think in the comments. I think this is a very funny build, I think it's really cool that. It's a quick two card combo to end on a King Calamity lock, but the deck can obviously do a lot more. Dinosaurs are still in it, even after the ban list, and I think that the deck has a lot of different routes you can go down. So check out my previous build as well, uh, which this deck is built upon, because in that build it's a bit more competitive, and it can end on stuff like Secret Village of Spellcasters, which can be very detrimental. So yeah, thanks for watching, like and subscribe for more dino content.